guys welcome back to rocket gyan my fellow space tubers and okay okay yeah <sighs> that was a loud music okay so we are back here again with another launch and this one we have from ariane space carrying ariane 5 rocket to space and uh this time they are doing a bit different differently because most of the time they what they do is they carry two satellites or one satellite in in this vehicle but this time they are carrying three satellites and they are uh, actually a big satellites uh, all together so yeah it's a good thing to have and uh, welcome to the stream everyone uh, hey daniel welcome welcome to the string a uh, stream hey texter uh, and nakajima yosuke welcome to the stream uh what what's the intro song i don't remember the name i actually searched it a long time ago but um yeah in, in the next stream i'll have a look at it what was the name and uh, uh tell you hey anna welcome to the stream so uh quickly i'll just go through the mission description and what whatever you need to know about this mission so on your screen is the ariane 5 rocket having the hydrologs uh engines basically and today it will be carrying a uh, total payload capacity total payload mass will be of around 10.9 tons it is going to geosynchronous transfer orbit and will carry uh three uh satellites to uh gto and this is the ariane space fourth launch of 2022 and third uh launch of ariane 5 this year so you can say they are actually launching this a lot uh, which is a good thing ariane 5 launches are rare and we are getting uh that a lot so it's a good thing so uh quickly just run, we will go run through the uh, mission description uh, the rocket itself first of all so the payload to gto is 10 tons and we are going to gto only and it's around 10.9 tons today so they have slightly improved the payload capacity for this and uh, uh, so, so the this rocket is a two-stage rocket if you uh, don't consider the solid rocket boosters if you consider them as a stage then it's a three-stage rocket so first of all we have the ignition of the Vulcan stay, uh, engine which is a Vulcan 2 engine so the thing the interesting thing about this is that this engine is a turbo pump uh, the thrust chamber is fed by two independent turbo pumps using a single gas generator so this is a engine which is a gas runs on gas generator cycle hydrologs and it's a very long time running engine because uh, it runs for around 600 seconds because it it is using hydrogen and oxygen as its fuels and uh, hydrogen uh, hydrologs engines tend to have a very high isp isp is nothing but uh, the mileage for a rocket so uh, yeah uh, there's that uh, then we have this solid rocket boosters it's they they themselves two solid rocket boosters are themselves very very good uh, they you know uh, have stpb as its fuel run on stpb as its fuel uh, so uh, ammonium perchlorate 18 this this actually this mixture is nothing but stpb and uh, uh, yes yeah, the, the the majority of the thrust at the liftoff is provided by these two solid rocket boosters and then after that the Vulcan 2 engine will uh, obviously provide the necessary thrust but yes the Vulcan 2 engine is ignited during the launch then we have the cryogenic upper stage which you can see uh, this cryogenic upper stage runs has an HM7B engine 57 kilonewtons of maximum thrust and a demerit of this engine is that it cannot be restarted so uh, therefore anything any um, you know maneuver which you need to do it has to be done in one burn and that's the reason why today also today also you need to you will be seeing that uh, uh, this will be going with a one uh, burn to gto it's not like an rl10 the, the the cryogenic stage of a delta 4 heavy or atlas when wherein it can uh, actually reignite a couple of times so uh, there's that and obviously this also uses hydrolox uh, but uh, uh, the the yaw end pitch for uh, this rocket the second stage is controlled by the engine itself but the roll control is by gaseous hydrogen thrusters okay then we have the silda this this black covering is known as silda in which 
you have two satellites galaxy 35 36 and in the upper uh, one uh, i know sorry in this we have the meteor set sat and the galaxy 35 36 should be above we'll have to wait and see how the configuration is that uh, is there uh, but yeah okay moving on so this is the galaxy 35 and 36 satellite in front of you so this satellite are nothing but a geosynchronous communication satellite that will provide dedicated north american links to broadcasters allow allowing them to air live events and programs including sports entertainments breaking news coverage etc etc so this is nothing but an american communication satellite going to geosynchronous transfer orbit galaxy 35 will replace galaxy 3c and galaxy 36 will replace galaxy 28 so and they have a very very um, long term contact this galaxy 35 36 satellites are actually launched by ariane 5 uh, galaxy series satellites are launched by ariane 5 a lot so this is uh no different moving on we have the meteosat which is the third generation satellite for the uh weather weather forecasting and it will revolutionize the weather forecasting because you know just just uh, it has this uh, three components three satellites are there you can see we have the imager satellite which will lo be launching today then we have a sounding satellite and then we have another kind of an imager satellite which will serve as a backup for this one so we have three satellites in this series today they will be launching this one so you know three satellites are needed for have for having a complete coverage around the earth so yeah there's that uh, and uh, talking about the imaging satellites so we have two imaging satellites and one sounding satellites so these uh, the imager one is launching today it will be having a combined imager data collection geosat and lightning imager so the the work of this imaging satellite is to actually image the atmosphere i will have a look um, you know you can see that here uh full disk scanning service lightning imager the second of the sun that it will do that so it will be scanning the imaging the satellites imaging the earth for the data collection and then we have the other one which is the infrared sound bar which is sounder which will throw infrared uh, vibrations and uh, those vibrations will get bounced back and it will read uh, those uh, vibrations and uh, according to that it will actually waves basically not vibration according to that it will determine the composition of the atmosphere and all those things so uh, this is actually a very interesting one because this will uh, revolutionize the weather forecasting how it will have a wide range of uses from enabling aircraft to avoid storms and for earlier alerts of flooding to to uh, through more precise monitoring of fires and fogs so uh, this is that and uh, yeah uh, we we have many things to talk about this uh, i had so much uh, things to talk about this satellite but i don't think so we have some time left so i would be skipping the part and moving on to the more important things so um, yeah so we today we are going to the gto orbit which is nothing but uh, you can see the geosynchronous transfer orbit uh, it will have these galaxy 35 36 and mtg i1 satellite so the apogee will be around 35000 36000 kilometer which is a normal apogee for gto uh, we have talked about this satellite these two satellites we now the mission profile so mission profile would be very similar lift off solid booster separation the fairing jettison then the first stage will separate the second stage will ignite then the galaxy 3s satellite galaxy uh, 36 and 35 will separate then the silda will separate which will uh oh you know expose that uh mtg i1 satellite to space and then finally it will separate so around 34 minutes you can see the burn uh, mission duration because it will be in a single burn so uh yeah this should be it and now i think i should be going to the live stream if i have it hey De pratim how are you yep uh now we have sure. the left the little towers that we see on the motion pictures represent a chain of telemetry stations receiving data from Ariane 5 all along the flight path. Then we separate the launch, the dual launch structure SILDA before releasing the lower passenger MTG-I1. 
And then exactly like in a relay race, we pass the baton to the customers who will perform all the maneuvers necessary to get the satellites into the final geostationary orbit. And this is not really the end of the mission uh, for Iron Space because we perform what we call a passivation of the upper stage, meaning that the remaining propellant of the tanks is expelled in order to prevent any risk of explosion in space. Uh, and once it's done, we can call it a mission terminated, a mission done. Thank you, Raphael. So in less than 30 minutes, Ariane 5 will lift off from Kourou with all the teams who will be uh, completely focused on the progression of this mission. We will have the privilege of gaining access to the temple of this spaceport, the Jupiter Control Room, the place where the launch operations are managed. And here with us tonight, we can see perhaps up on the screen representatives from the different space companies directly involved with tonight's mission. We have André Hubert Roussel, CEO of Ariane Group, who we, I trust this is him up on the screen. Yes, I'm right. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Daniel nguyen Director of Space Transportation at ESA, who is just on the screen. And of course, Marianne Claire, Director of the Guiana Space Center. There she is, Directrice du CG. Okay, so today's launch continues Intelsat's Galaxy Fleet refresh plan, which began with Galaxy 30 in 2020 and carries the third pair of satellites launched over the last few years. These assets will provide occasional services to cover North America. We will learn more about these two very special passengers on board in the following report. So see you in a couple of minutes on Road to Space. We'll be back afterwards. So we are T minus 17 minutes, under 17 minutes from the launch. Everything is looking great. Hey, Anna, uh, your okay, great. North America. Galaxy 35 and Galaxy 36 will soon provide high performance media contribution capabilities and support live event coverage for Intelsat customers. Our video neighborhoods around the world reach 2 billion viewers. These are 2 billion people who are informed, entertained, educated and inspired by the content we bring to them on behalf of our customers. Launched aboard Ariane 5, the two geostationary communication satellites are part of Intelsat's Galaxy Fleet refresh plan that started with Galaxy 30, also launched on an Ariane 5 rocket back in 2020. As the newest additions to Intelsat's Galaxy fleet, Galaxy 35 and 36 will contribute to the most efficient media distribution system in North America. So um, there's a, some sort of buffering, but it's not from my end. America. The Galaxy 35 only. and Galaxy 36 satellites will bring C-band contribution capacity to support high-profile events such as collegiate and professional football, auto racing, baseball, golf, boxing, and professional wrestling. It really takes a lot of people and a lot of companies to, to design, build, test, launch, and then operate a satellite. We're very fortunate we have some of the best people in the industry and everybody contributed to this big success. Built on Maxar's 1300 class bus, one of the most trusted commercial spacecraft platform and backed by Maxar's 60 plus years in satellite manufacturing, these two new satellites support Intelsat's successful, uninterrupted transition in the C-band spectrum and Maxar's commitment to customer success and improving life on Earth. Well, in less than 15 minutes, All right, I guess it's not buffering around there. Is it? And he was already nope. there in 1983 wow. on the first launch of an Intel satellite. So you just saw that everything was uh, green there. So uh, that is great to see.
launchers, Intelsat satellites. So that's one launch. Okay, I'm seeing it. Contract on Iron 6 to launch two Intelsat satellites, 41 and 44. Well, we will also be bringing you news of Ariane 6 later in the program, but for now, let's stay focused on tonight. Tonight's mission. Well, we've just been introduced to the two Intel. set passengers, Intel set passengers, but as you know, they are not the only passengers on board Ariane 5 tonight. Their fellow traveler is, how might I describe him? Well, he is really quite remarkable. Designed in the south of France by Telus Alenia Space, MTGI-1 is the first of six new generation satellites designed to revolutionize weather forecasting for UMETSAT. To find out more about him, him, let's watch <laughs> this next report. As the threat of extreme weather events is increasing, accurate weather forecasting and now casting is now more important than ever. What if the most complex geostationary system ever launched could help predict storms, save lives and safeguard goods? This is the mission of MTGI-1 that will take off from Europe's spaceport today on Ariane 5. A highly anticipated launch for the very first Meteosat third generation constellation satellite operated by the European operator UMETSAT. It is developed by the European Space Agency with Thales Alenia Space and more than a hundred entities from all over Europe. A true symbol of team effort and dedication of cutting edge technology and innovation, this heralds a brand new era for weather forecasting. This new generation is important, first of all, to guarantee continuity of data for a long period of time, to support uh, users, uh, not only public users, but everybody. Everybody means every citizen today with more accurate information, with more uh, spatial resolution, with uh, more timely information uh, for the relevance of the daily use of everybody. Meteosat is part of our DNA at Thales Alenia Space. We have been the trusted prime contractor for all the Meteosat satellites since the 70s. Meteosat first, second generation, and now third generation. Through Meteosat, Europe supplies the best meteorological satellites in the world, thanks to ESA and UMETSAT, and plays a major role in world weather forecast. Our teams at Thales Alenia Space are extremely proud to be part of this success story alongside with OHB and all other contributors. These third generation weather satellites will revolutionize now casting of weather in Europe and Africa by helping storm prediction and enhance weather forecasts. MTGI, and in due course the full MTGI program, will be critically important for supporting now casting. Now casting is the forecasting over a short period of time, up to six hours which is most important for intense localised events, which in reality are very difficult to forecast on longer timescales. The major thing that the MTG does is to do that. It, it picks up major storms in their infancy so we can actually take the necessary steps to ensure light, safety of life, uh, prepare for the, for the deluge that might happen. The social and economic benefits of accurate forecasts are huge, and this is largely thanks to satellites. Weather, and particularly uh, severe weather events, take a huge toll on European society. In fact, in a recent survey of its members, the World Economic Forum identified that the key risks that countries see themselves as facing over the next 10 years are severe weather events and the failure to respond adequately to climate change. ESA and UMETSAT have been working together for over four decades to maintain Europe as a leader in satellite meteorology. MTGI-1 will shortly be joined by two other UMETSAT satellites, MTGS-1 and MTGI-2. Together, they will provide essential weather and climate data for the next two decades to come.
back to this highly sophisticated satellite later on in the program. In the meantime, I would like to focus on to be able to serve any mission. We, we're now um, 30 seconds away from the DDO announcing the synchronized sequence. Yeah. The DDO is obviously the range operations director. He will be announcing the synchronized sequence. And I would just like to ask you before this, you two, if you can explain what it is. It's a last crucial step. It's a succession of, of operations aimed at giving more and more autonomy to the launcher. And for this, everything that you see on the board needs to remain green. Uh, the space base, they launch the launch the ICO. Attention for the sequence final launcher. Ah. So the DDO is about to announce. Top, H0-7 minutes. Yeah, so you Brilliant. see that everything is green. So everything it's is green place. right now, guys. Uh, really sorry for that buffering. I uh, had to go and resolve the network issue. I'm so much in pain with this network provider. I can't tell you, but uh, uh, yeah. Uh, right now I just uh, did something so now the stream should be working fine yes it is indeed so we are right now T minus 6 minutes 30 seconds from the liftoff pressurization of the tanks and uh, a few minutes 3 minutes before launch will give the launcher the exact uh, date and time of the launch and as we want um, that of course 100% of all the parameters remain green if one turn red during this synchronous sequence then this, the clock will be set back to 7 minutes before the launch. Of course, we don't take any risk. We don't leave anything by chance. What kind of problem so is this? Here you can see the board is actually I mean, totally uh, green, uh, although the language is different. I think it's French. But uh, right now everything is green, which should remain like that. And here you can we can see the uh, glimpse of the mission control room, the, uh, the views the mission control actually sees on the screen, which is great indeed. So, uh, yeah, there's that. To actually authorize the launch, I uh, need to check that there is no issue on the satellites, of course, on the launcher, on the space base. So, right now, everything is red, so we should be able to continue yeah. the, the, the countdown. Well, uh, before that, um, we are obviously watching Road to Space, and now we have some images from the the events of the launch camp. There you go. Finally, we have some views of the rocket, uh, which we can see. The campaign started uh, a month ago when uh, the this stages the... Uh, were shipped from uh, our uh, facilities from our group in, in Lemuro and, uh, and Bremen towards Kourou. There you see the main cryogenic uh, space that's uh, move, getting out of its container. And then the, the boosters, uh, each one of them holding 240 tons of solid propellant. Huh? And then the upper stage has been mated on top. And once uh, this assembly is, is ready, you can move to another building so that the launcher meets the satellites. So they, yeah, so talking about the satellites, uh, the MTG I-1 uh, satellite arrived in French Guiana last October by boat. Uh, also, it was transferred to a preparation facility. Those satellites look indeed look beautiful. This is uh, most probably the uh, Galaxy satellite. No, this was this is the Meteor satellite. It is fueled, and like you see, these are very careful operation. On the other hand, the Galaxy 35 and Galaxy 36 arrived in late October, November, respectively, by plane in Cayenne. Uh, they were transferred in a special container by road to the Guiana Space Center in Kourou. Both satellites are also removed from the containers in clean rooms. Uh, they are carefully inspected. You saw it like turning uh, uh, on yes, itself. Yes, camping. That's the thing. Uh, uh, and the Norway still missed a lot, but uh, different versions, the different brothers are still doing their job. Talking about spacecraft that weight uh, three tons, three to six, six tons, it's uh, yeah. massive. And so here, yeah, they are like uh, checking that everything is perfectly right. And then the satellites are transferred in the final assembly building where they are meeting the launcher finally for the first time yes so we can uh, actually so uh, here actually so you, you can, can see it's yeah. been uh, uh, adapted it's been actually mounted on the silda this is the silda and this is the rocket uh, and uh, this is the meteor satellite and then finally the fairing is actually being mounted so uh, yeah this is how it looks like looks amazing right assembled directly on top of the upper stage and then only then the whole Silda Galaxy and fairing assembly is positioned on top of MTG, right? Right, as you, you see in the images. Uh, and I think, yeah, you can see. So it's interesting to see that uh, 
uh wow the the payloads are actually uh you know attached from top to bottom and not from bottom to top you just saw that that the silda component gets attached afterwards and at the last uh means the galaxy 3536 is actually mounted the last so it's an interesting uh, vehicle assembly uh tactic which they use so yeah right now we are t minus 2 minutes 20 seconds remaining everything is looking green which well, is amazing to see the keys are now firmly installed on the balcony But guys with the again we are not getting any views of the rockets of this is something which they need to improve yeah finally thank you it's quite clear this guy here so i hope we'll have sort of the same spectacle uh it's uh We we might see the booster separation yeah. with our eyes. Maybe like last time we saw the fairing separation. I'm not sure we're going to see it in daylight. And you can see the people really going out. It really depends on the clouds and the angle of the camera. Beautiful but, uh, launch today. I, I feel that uh, we might be extremely lucky uh, yes. to see all of this. They're uh, all events. running out onto the balcony. And, uh, yeah, there are some clouds, but uh, you know, from Okay, we times are... times between two clouds, you can see actually these boosters getting separated, and I really hope that I will get to see these three dots in the sky. Well, Tamara Tezele, the Range Operations Director, is about to announce that we have hit the one-minute mark before lift. So, guys, T minus fifty-four seconds remaining. Everything is looking good. You can see the weather is holding up. The range is green. The vehicle looks amazing, and we are about to witness the launch. Let's just, whoa! This is always an an exciting thing to watch. T minus thirty seven seconds remaining. Okay, T minus thirty twenty nine seconds remaining now. Okay, silence before the storm. T minus. 20 19 18 17 15 14 9 8 7 6 5 4 3 2 1 10 Oh, you can see the pitch over maneuver also. That is amazing. Wow, look at that. The lighting is always. This is the perfect time La to launch this nominal. rocket. Wow, just look at that go. Hopefully, we'll get a perfect view of the separation of the. uh boosters just look at that the launch view gallery has its own view <laughs> wow and we are off how wonderful to see the mighty arian roaring across that equatorial sky definitely a launch to savor We are now over 1 minute into the flight as she powers her way into space heading east out over the Atlantic Ocean. Right now, mature reaction. It should be experiencing the maximum dy dynamic pressure right now and the next event should be the stage uh, the booster separation which you will see most probably casting itself and, yeah, and, and we are extremely Look lucky because uh, we can clearly see uh, the, the rocket like blasting its its way towards Rafael, space. Rafael, what do you have to tell us? Well, I mean, everything is going to happen quite quick, quickly now. Um, you'll have uh, in a few seconds the booster separations. That's uh, the first thing have, we have to look out for. Yeah, they will have provided 90% of the overall thrust in order to literally escape the gravity pull of the Earth. And with a clear sky, we could we'll see them well. I hope so. I think we will. And then you will have the separation of the fairing when we have crossed the limits of the atmosphere. It's protected the satellite from the pressure separation is coming up very soon guys uh, generated at the booster's ignition and then we will have the separation of the main cryogenic stage and 
And here we have the sea. Look at that. We see it so clearly. We see it so it's confirmed <laughs> visually and also in our... By the DDO. By the DDO. Brilliant. And okay, so the sky is perfectly clear. So it's perfect conditions to, to So, um, Mathieu, without these two boosters, the launcher is obviously now a lot lighter So um, than it was at takeoff. Its load has been lightened uh, by how many tons? And why is this necessary, well, even it, essential? Does lighter mean faster? Yeah, yeah, it was 775 tons on the launch pad. Ah. Now, now it's about 156 tons because we got rid of, of these empty boosters. Uh, ima imagine that we managed to, uh, to get rid of about 500 tons of propellant in about two, uh, two minutes and 20 seconds. But this is uh, the amount of energy that you need. Uh, to, to go to space. And, uh, and this is a principle, you get rid of any useless mass yep. to, to provide That's maximum e acceleration science. to the satellites. And now we've got fairing separation. The fairing separation. And we actually can Chip see. Whoa, <laughs> look at those animations. So we have, yes, again, we visually, and the we, confirmation wow. and the also confirmation, by the DDO. That's brilliant we, news. We, we, we can actually see the two halves of, of the fairing getting separated. That's uh, magical. Those oh, wow. images are <laughs> incredible. <laughs> and this is the last time, by the way, we see the piece of art that was on the fairing. Bye bye. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, thank you, Raphael. As you can see on the screen, computers are generating now perhaps CGI images for us to see what's happening. It will be coming up in a minute. We have five minutes, not now, because obviously the skies are we so clear. We can actually see those everything. fairing We have house. five minutes wow. now before our next milestone stone. So let's focus yes, on our launch. Yes, it would be better with the telemetry, I hope. Yep, there you go. The telemetry is here. Heavy launcher, it is. It is the reference in space transportation. Yes. Uh, 137-kilometer altitude. The <laughs> the so the, the altitude needs to be raised to uh, around 36,000. The apogee should be raised to around 36,000. Uh, not, not so sure about the periapsis there, but this should all should be around 200 kilometers or so. We'll have to wait and see that there. Oh, and that's how, for the first time, we managed to land a La probe and a So that's the, uh, what it's able to do. Or we service the, uh, uh, the space station five times with the automated transfer vehicle again. I mean, Ariane is uh, almost a member of any of, the, uh, of our European families. And actually, uh, <laughs> Raphael uh, spent Christmas with uh, Ariane, right? <laughs> yeah, it was last year, yes. I was lucky enough to be in French Guiana. And, and that was uh, obviously a very, very emotional launch. Uh, it's very hard to describe so the now, tension. Uh, oh, it what was will happen now. is uh, you will all see, uh, you are actually seeing the graph, the yellow and the green, you, you already know what that means. I don't have to tell you that. Uh, so um, there's that. What I wanted to tell you is that it, it is still burning on the first stage. The first stage has a burn time of around 600 seconds, which is like five minutes uh, or so. Uh, <clears throat> 600 seconds, 10 minutes. 10 minutes yeah 10 minutes and uh, uh, we'll have to wait and see because the first uh, stage has hydrolocks and it's very 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 efficient so it almost almost reaches the not the desired orbit but a proper orbit uh, on its uh, own the on its propulsion from the first stage itself uh, because of its high efficiency it's kind of an SSTO but obviously it has to drop the stage uh, so that it comes back to the earth and that is the reason why uh, it does not properly reach the the, the what should I say the uh, trajectory is such that it does not properly reach the space and it falls down back to the earth and then finally the the mm, the second stage comes into action which is not reignitable and uh, because of that uh, it has to do all the burn and its job in its one burn only but still guys uh, this was the rocket which launched jwst right the james Webb space telescope and uh, that was supposed to be so precise that mission is supposed to be so precise and i thought that this okay they might be able to do it properly but not very precise like we used to get in rl10 uh, engine the centaur upper stage uh, but uh, jwst had uh, such a bullseye mission uh, with the ariane 5 that it actually boosted the, uh, its lifetime by like a decade or something 
or what because the the fuel required to correct the trajectory was actually diminished because the the trajectory of the JWST was uh, provided by the RAN5 was so 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 accurate so the correction maneuvers was not needed Calma. Yes, and everything's nominal. As a separation, yep. everything is of, nominal. Uh, your uh, things are looking good. Uh, you can see the altitude kind of dips here, but then again it will, uh, you know, uh, start increasing. So when it dips, that means it has passed the apogee at that point. And then when, since it is still accelerating, the periapsis, which is the lowest point in the orbit, comes, uh, you know, comes above the Earth. And then it starts uh, increasing and it becomes the uh, apogee. So there is a flip which happens between the periapsis and apogee. And that is the reason why uh, for some time it goes down and then it starts going up. In the trajectory also you can see that. It was Behaving well. So it's and, uh, very uh, important. Uh, and I cannot believe that the, the sky was so clear <laughs> that we could see. I know, we still uh, haven't kind of that. quite um, got over that. That was wonderful. Well, um, Yes, campaign. Uh, all um, you know, uh, most of the time people say that they like the night launch because of the fire, uh, the the fiery uh, plume which the rocket ignites just uh, you know brightens uh, all the environment. Hey, there you go. We have the stage separation and the second separation EPC and the second so stage engine the startup. The main stage is confirmed. So uh, well, everything is nominal. So that's a very we're, important yeah. we're step. Part, we're halfway there. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. all so going, so, yeah, we're going according there. to the plan. So far, is so good. Yeah. All is going to plan. Well, I'm very happy about that. Well, Ariane is heading for a geostationary orbit 36,000 kilometers from Earth. It's, is this a fairly standard mission for you? What is at stake well, I mean, tonight? Uh, we are used to launch in geostationary orbit, but every mission is very unique. It's uh, the satellites are different, the trajectory is slightly different, uh, the performance of the launcher is different, uh, and it's years of work uh, for oh, all the team, for the satellite team, for the manufacturing of the satellite, the launch contract signature, typically two years before the launch, and then all the mission preparation, especially on the launcher side. Yes, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's only a 40 minutes uh, launch, but uh, yes, uh, fly in the bug. Actually, you know, this is a very unique uh, uh, trajectory which it has and a unique thing which it does because since it uh, the the thrust of the upper stage is not so much, it's almost around 60 kilonewtons. So it takes a very unique uh, approach to compensate that because it actually dips in a bit and then uh, it uh, 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 you know increase it increases altitude. So when it dips, so uh, the it gains the natural speed which it can get, and when it burns some of the fuel, the, it gets lighter, the thrust actually increases, and uh, then it uh, you know uh, the altitude increases, and then finally it can go to the G. So it's a very unique and interesting approach uh, which Ariane 5 uses for the upper stage. Uh, that, that is the reason why you will certainly see Ariane 5 going down after the second stage going down, the altitude coming down. But it's actually gaining speed, trying to gain speed, trying to compensate what, for the lack of thrust. And once it has that uh, uh, burn some of the fuel, it has that proper thrust and then it just accelerates. So, a very unique uh, uh, orbital mechanics which they have applied here. So yeah, I hope that answers your question. Are performed horizontally, and uh, you can see how how easy <laughs> it is almost to uh, to uh, to join this to a first. In, in parallel, uh, we prepared also fully representative uh, mockups of the boosters of RN6 that you uh, that you can see there. Uh, by the way, one of them is fully filled with sugar. Sugar? <laughs> yes. That's, you're, uh, you're kidding me. Yeah, we, we will not ignite it, otherwise. <laughs> sugar <laughs> rocket. Yeah. So once, once uh, the two uh, stages are integrated together, they've been transferred horizontally, and you can see that at the end of the road, our road to space on RN6, you've got this new mobile gantry that will be on top of the launch pad of RN6. We now do the integration 
of the launcher directly on the launch pad. Operationally, it's a really a game changer for us. It will ease everything. And we only go vertical once this we are the on the launch pad. This is the Ariane 6 rocket, guys. So you can see the, this very first time we were here, this operation, and everything went very smoothly, nominally, as we say. That was, that was good to know. <laughs> you, know you hear a lot about nominal. Um, and, and now we're ready to perform combined tests, which is really when the launcher meets the launch pad. But in parallel, we've got also a very, very important uh, campaign, uh, test campaign. In Now we are in DLR, uh, DLR facilities in uh, Germany, in Lampolshausen, where United for the first time a fully representative upper stage with the Vinci engine for 45 seconds. And we've got more tests to, to be performed. And finally, uh, something's missing on top of this uh, what launcher. What is missing? <laughs> you must, must have uh, recognized it, is our brand new uh, fairing. Uh, 20 meters oh, high, yes, okay. uh, and uh, you see the, the last rehearsal was really to, to check that we can hoist uh, correctly this fairing on top and there again, everything went very, uh, very smoothly. Uh, and yes, I, I'm always very impressed by this uh, mobile gantry. It's about the weight of the Ethel Tower, huh? except that you can roll it back <laughs> when well, you need to launch. But we and, and are, all I know is we are all waiting impatiently for it to make an inaugural flight. Sorry. And, and look at this final image uh, that we managed to, uh, to get at the end of this year. Yes. <laughs> well, yeah. as Ariane 5 picks up speed to climb higher and La higher, it continues its flight path with three very nominal. special satellites on board, including MTG I-1. As you know, the third generation Meteo satellite built by TELUS Alenia Space with monitor climate and weather changes in Europe and Africa. Now, to show the strategic importance for the African people of such a launch, Ariane 5 has taken off, as we mentioned earlier, decorated on its its head on its fairing, a unique work of art. That is why the flight tonight, VO259, has been baptized state of the art. This artwork is part of ASAP, the African Space Art Project. And to find out more, let's watch this next project. Report. Under Ariane 5's fairing is MTG I-1, UMITSAT's new weather satellite. On the other side of the launcher's cone shape, memory of today, memory of the future. This is in fact an artwork created by three African artists. It is part of the African Space Art Project, ASAP. This painting symbolizes the link between the European operator, UMETSAT, and the African continent. Through this artwork, the artists have demonstrated a link between Africa, space, and climate change. These three things are at the heart of what UMETSAT is about. I'm incredibly proud that UMESAT has been a part of this project. The collaboration between these three artists, Geraldine Tobe, Michel Ekaba, and John David Encott, is also a tool to raise people's awareness about Africa's climate <laughs> challenges. C'est quelque part la signature artistique, symbolique, historique du continent africain qui va créer une relation tout à fait particulière avec l'espace parce qu'il a besoin d'observer de l'espace, le changement climatique qui l'impacte de façon très très forte, alors que c'est le continent qui aujourd'hui émet le moins de CO2 dans le monde entier. Pour nous, l'art était une manière de faire passer tous ces messages en même temps. À la fois, euh, ces satellites vont, vont répondre à des besoins vitaux, et à la fois, c'est aussi un, un signe d'une innovation technologique et d'une aspiration de l'Afrique d'avoir un, un vrai rôle dans tout ce qui est spatial. Selected by a jury, including representatives of UMETSAT, Arena Space and the African Union, the collaborative artwork carries a message of hope, harmony and sustainability. Une chose que je retiens quand même lors de ce travail, l'impossibilité a permis le possible. D'où justement aussi le titre de cette œuvre, Mémoire d'aujourd'hui, Mémoire du futur. On a l'impression que nos différences ne nous permettent pas réellement de faire des choses. Mais justement, ce sont ces différences qui font la force de ce que nous sommes aujourd'hui et qui apportent un plus dans le développement du monde nominale. dont nous rêvons. A world where space is used in a sustainable way to support the Earth and prepare for tomorrow. What an interesting report. Well, Raphael, this is, the f is this the first time a work of art adorns the, the uh, fairing of the launcher? Well, usually you have company's logo uh, on the fairing, which is good, but uh, now we have an this is artistic quite dimension to it, to the launch. The project dates back to uh, uh, 2018, and I had the chance, actually, we, uh, the team, had the chance to uh, see the piece of art nominal three meters long uh, when it was exposed in Iron Space's uh, offices 
uh, before it got um, installed on the fairing. But I think this is not the first time that the Ariane launcher is involved in artistic projects. Uh, yes, no, but because uh, this launcher is not inspiring uh, engineers <laughs> like me only, but uh, also artists. And uh, we, we've set up uh, very, very interesting uh, collaborations with uh, some of the artists. Uh, for instance, I'm, I'm wearing uh, an Avenir uh, hoodie, uh, which is uh, actually uh, from the French uh, singer uh, Aurel San. Uh, so I, I have the t-shirt. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, and it's directly... I look forward to my t-shirt and my sweatshirt afterwards. Yeah, we'll talk about this later. Okay, we'll talk and about <laughs> it later. <laughs> but it's directly inspired by, by what we do, and also for the 40th anniversary of, uh, of uh, Ariane, uh, we got uh, a, a, an entire album composed by a musician. Wow. Very, very inspiring music. That's brilliant. Yep. Well, let's get back to our mission at hand, guys. Mm -hmm. In about 15 minutes, as you know, MTGI-1 will separate from our launcher. This exceptional satellite built by Telus Alenia Space for Maxar will eventually revolutionize weather forecasting. It will be placed in geostationary orbit. But, Raphael, I have a question. Mm. I thought that geostationary orbit is mainly populated with telecommunication satellites. Now, it's true that with the Ariane 5, we are <laughs> used to send, <laughs> to send telecommunication satellites on the geostationary orbit, dedicated to broadcast, broadband connectivity, uh, and many more applications to connect each other. It is indeed not every day that we launch an Earth observation slash scientific satellite on this. It's still burning. It's a long, long uh, um, burn because it's ha it has around 15 minutes of burn time. So uh, uh, T plus 22 minutes, you will see the end of its burn. But uh, they have cut down that telemetry which we were getting. So not so sure what is happening there. Everything is working fine or not. But yes, that female voice is uh, always giving us assurance that everything is nominal and yes is kind of pretty with Ariane 6 two more mtg satellites new generation of mtg satellites the s1 and the i2 uh, this is going to be with Ariane 6 well before we go on in order to be able to properly exploit the numerous data from the exceptional satellite meteosat had to train its users and there are many of them more details in this next report Next Tech, you met Sat. MTGI-1 will soon start a new mission, revolutionizing now casting of high impact weather in Europe and Africa. The first data to be collected will considerably improve our daily life. UMETSAT carefully trained and prepared future users to achieve these results. We'll have 50 times more data coming from the new satellite compared to what we have now. So we need to handle all this data and make it accessible. UMETSAT is playing a crucial role to ensure that the data from MTG satellites will help to protect people and property as fast and as efficiently as possible. Based on the new data, we'll be able to issue more precise warnings of severe weather that saves lives, that saves journey time on your motorway, that saves uh, transport costs, that saves airport costs. It also saves a cost related to flooding, for example. So we'll be able to save lives and property based on better forecasts at the very short term, which means in the next hour, in the next two hours, in the next six hours. With its brand new technology, MTG satellites will provide key data for the years to come. Some of the data has new information in it, which we don't have from other geostationary orbits over Europe. And that's really very exciting. We are not having that from anywhere else. It's a European satellites. It is better satellites than we had before. They have a higher resolution, which means that we can see more details in the images. This is all very exciting because it brings new, a lot of potential, a lot of new possibilities. This data will also be an important source of information for the aviation field where now casting is essential. If the visibility goes very low or the cloud base gets very low, they need to do different kind of procedures. They cannot have so many planes moving on the airport and they kind of need to get ready for that one. And then the now casting comes in and we try to warn their airfields about those things. After years of preparation, MTGI-1 is now on its way to geostationary orbit to help us all to better anticipate tomorrow's weather. 
MTGI-1 is on its way effectively to destination at 36,000 kilometers from Earth. It will be put into orbit in a little over 10 minutes now. But before that, our launch has to complete a number of important steps. Raphael. I mean, the first one is the cutoff of the upper stage engine to prepare the first satellite separation, Galaxy 35. It is a very important to do it on time because it's really driving the satellite induction accuracy and it has an impact and on the rest of the satellite. And you can see the altitude right now, space. it's uh, yeah, increasing rapidly, rapidly, late, 300, orbit, huh? I imagine. Yeah. 350 yeah. kilometers and, 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 and it will and just skyrocket right now, it's space rocket I should say, uh, go, go, and it will go to 36,000 kilometers or so. So it's uh, the second stage is performing as per the expectations and everything is working. Fine. It's going to have, uh, we are going to uh, get a cut off very soon. Well, before the separation of the first satellite, I would really like to have another look at the highlights of the liftoff that we just watched and experienced. If one of you could comment on the images, which should be coming up, the replay of the launch tonight, which was quite fantastic. I mean, we will comment, but we will also watch it again ourselves. Because yeah, it's yeah, very, yeah. very, very impressive. Very fast. You know, the first event is really we, we separate these uh, cryo arms that are, arms, yeah, that are fitting to your stage. Liquid oxygen, liquid hydrogen. You ignite uh, the Vulcan engine, and once everything's ready, you can ignite the solid propellant boosters and it's lift off. And, and uh, we, we need to check that the Vulcan engine is working. Yes, because of course, of course. Once the boosters are ignited, there is no turning back. Yes. <laughs> well, that's, that's why it's so tricky when we ignite. It was uh, such a clear sky. That's, that's, uh, I, uh, that's what I told you, it's uh, maybe uh, one of the most beautiful <laughs> yeah. launches. Uh, really, I've, it's I, one of the most yeah, beautiful I've, you've ever I've seen. I've attended so far because uh, the, the fact that we managed to see uh, the fairing separation so, so yes, clearly is, rare, uh, huh? is, uh, is, is, is quite amazing. Yes. What a show. Well, in a moment, Ariane 5 will acquire the signal from Melindy in Kenya. Kenya or Kenya, depending from where you come from. This is also the signal for the much-awaited countdown to the separation of the first Galaxy 35 satellite. Is it not, Raphael? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So there are lots of concentration. Right, right now we are like raising altitude quite drastically. Um, so we are at a speed of about nine <laughs> kilometers per second. Yes. Uh, so it's quite fast. No, it's uh, we are flying over Africa yeah, right yeah. now. And uh, yeah, so lots of uh, concentration before the last steps because like i said it's a we can see the replay uh, now it was indeed a very beautiful launch to witness through their naked eyes actually uh, and uh, through the cameras too the lighting was perfect to uh, just you know lighten up the rocket so that we can see the bits and pieces not uh, as in red but we can see actual the actual rocket going through the space going through the sky to the space and beyond was it easy assembling these three satellites under the same fairing for this flight? Well, I mean, so it was really a meeting of two different worlds with a telecommunication satellite on one hand and Earth observation slash scientific satellite on the other hand. So they have different constraints and especially on the cleanliness aspects. So we had to be very careful in actually preparing the satellites in the clean rooms and during the encapsulation under uh, the fairing, because you know that one single speck of dust, oh, especially yes, for optical elements, could alter well, the functioning of the satellite in space. I think. Extinction ESC. Yes, we were waiting for this uh, Tomorrow confirmation. Tamara says, she's just what she just told us. Yes, that's the, the upper stage uh, is, has, cut has been cut off. It means that uh, we've reached our final orbit. So now we are entering another phase. Are we in the ballistic phase? The, the space ballet. The space ballet, yeah. I love that. <laughs> yeah, term. the upper stage is like uh, performing slight orientation maneuvers to uh, separate the first satellite in a specific direction. But we'll see also different uh, uh, maneuvers to be uh, realized in between each separations in order to make sure that there is a right distancing uh, between the satellites in order to prevent any collision, of course. Well, in one minute, of course, there will be the separation of the satellite. G35, thank you, Raphael. We we're all waiting eagerly on road to space for this separation. The C-band telecommunication satellite was, of course, built by Maxor, Maxar for Intelsat. Until then, 
what are the final important stages that we should be all looking out for? Well, I mean, we will witness the separation of Galaxy 35, uh, quickly followed by the separation of Galaxy 36. Then we'll have the separation of the dual long structure, the SILDA, which is the black uh, box uh, right uh, under it. And then we don't see it on the image, uh, on the 3D image, but there is the MTG I1 that is going to be separated in the final uh, state. And then the mission is not over for our own space because we perform passivation of the upper stage, and then uh, it's going to be the end of the mission. And separation should be right now for uh, Galaxy 35. Hey, there you go. for the confirmation. Separation G35. We have the okay, separation. So it's a half a relief for the customer now. <laughs> Confirmed. <laughs> happy faces, thumbs up. You see Everyone's happy faces, smiling. but also concentration. Yeah, yeah. Thank because you. it's yeah. definitely not over. Yeah. Now let's head to the fishbowl where we should be able to see. Well, I don't know who he is, but Valérie Boucher. She First is satellite separated. Now the other sec second will be Arian happening, and, and then the, the Silda, and then the meteor satellite. All the internal activities to ensure that the launch went smoothly. It must be such a relief for her when I'm. I wouldn't even want to be in her place. But this is, of course, not the end of the mission, is it, guys? No, it's not because, uh, like uh, we said, like there are like many separations to come. It's also only for the customer the start of the, of the journey because they have to check that the satellite is uh, doing perfectly, and also to bring the satellite from 1,000 kilometers uh, from the surface of the Earth to 36,000 kilometers. So the journey. Well, he, so this here is we have Valerie Boucher, Intel Set Project Manager, and of course before we had. Tamara Tesley, who is the um, Rangers, the DDO, the Rangers Operation Director. Good evening, Valérie Boucher, and well, and congratulations. <laughs> Galaxy 36 is just about to be separated from Ariane 5, joining its brother, Galaxy 35. Raphael, the first four satellites of the Galaxy constellation built by Maxal for Intelsat are not positioned in the same orbits. Why is this? Well, I mean, they are all, they are quite close to each other. They are all positioned on the geostationary orbit and they are all facing the North American uh, area, which is like a quite big one. So in order to cover everything, you need several satellites uh, to be placed like on this geostationary uh, orbit in order to provide uh, services uh, for also for remote areas. We know that uh, in the U.S., there are lots of deserts, uh, mountains, so satellites it's are very key assets to be a, come to complementary to terrestrial uh, uh, solutions. Well, it's time to take a look at what's going on some 600 kilometers now above our heads. What is the status of Ariane 5? Raphael, I think we're waiting for the separation. Yeah, and you see that we are still raising altitude. We went from 940 kilometers to 150. Uh, 1,500 kilometers in only three minutes. <laughs> and we are now about to witness the separation of the second upper stage passenger, Galaxy 36. G36. Yeah, in about 30 seconds. Just to give you uh, also another order of magnitude, keep in mind that uh, the International Space Station orbits uh, around the Earth at only uh, foreign. Mm. 450 now the SILDA separation is supposed to happen. So we're uh, way, will uh, the proper satellite separation will happen around T plus 34 long minutes or so? After the SILDA. First of all, this uh, satellite will separate, then the SILDA, and then that. Tamara Tesley up on the screen, who is about to announce any minute. Four seconds. Separation G36. So we have, okay, so <laughs> now we see happy faces. Happy yeah. faces again. <laughs> for the Brilliant. upper passenger. And, and, and I like the way they do it. You yeah. know, it's one sub up for the first satellite and, and two subs two up thumbs for the up. second. Yeah. Yes, that's and then <laughs> three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, Very important fantastic but, news. But this is not over because we still have another passenger to. Uh, what is the next? I'm getting very nervous. <laughs> well, we'll see the SILDA, the dual launch structure that is going to be separated. It's also quite tricky. Uh -huh. uh, that's uh, that, that's very very uh, tricky. So you have to separate uh, the structure from uh, from the upper stage 
and uh, we uh, technically uh, call it a Nespresso capsule because, oh, that's <laughs> because right. of its... Uh, it looks like it. It looks like a <laughs> Nespresso capsule. You can actually well, see the... Um, uh, the <laughs> the stage is actually has a you know different orientation which you can see right now because uh, this is uh, very necessary to avoid the collision when this silda will separate so that it's correctly balanced because any unbalance could harm the satellite that's right below the mtg satellite that's uh, right below this uh, structure so, so well, that's very very uh, and when it's on the ground it has to uh, support also uh, quite a large mass of the oh, yes. passenger yeah, you're it's right. like 6.3 uh, tons yeah, uh, of the two galaxy. So yeah, it has and, to. And it's a very light structure that has right. to withstand this uh, this uh, impressive uh, mass that it has well, on now top. Now in uh, ten seconds, yes, the silda should we be. And <laughs> yeah, nope. should be separated, and we we'll wait for this. Uh, uh, that's a that, uh, uh, that uh, difficult thing to say. Uh, uh, follow. It's a GT orbit, although the periapsis is around hundred kilometers or so, so it will deorbit itself. There. there you go. All right. Silda is so separated, but it will take some time. It will take some time. It's fully separated, and you can see that we are still gaining lots of altitude in two minutes. We've gained like we have no come close to about two thousand kilometers of altitude. My question is: Is there going to be a silver on Ariane Six? Ah, uh, yes. That's what all my space friend geeks want to Yes, know. we, we mm -hmm. will still need to, uh, to perform some uh, dual launches or triple launches uh, as, as we have today. Uh, but uh, we have a new uh, dual launch uh, structure, a new uh, DLS, mm. uh, that, uh, that will be actually uh, larger and, uh, and higher. So now we can really uh, accommodate uh, yeah. a bigger satellites on top and below the, the DLS. It helps us to propose lots of many different... Can I just interrupt you? We yeah. have now uh, C Sebastian Nomay in the fishbowl. Mm. He is UMETSAT's program director for Arian Espace. And Good you... evening. <laughs> Sorry, to, I, I interrupted you. No, I was saying that uh, we have um, lots of conf configuration that we can imagine under the Arian 6 ferry. This is probably also why we have been so successful in selling Ariane 6 so far, because we sold 28 Ariane 6 already, including 18 for a uh, famous constellation. So we are really looking for the first flight of Ariane 6. I got the message off it. With only a few <laughs> seconds to go before the separation of MTG I-1, everyone must be holding their breath now. I'd like to remind you that MTG one is the first of six satellites. Now you can to see the Ariane 5 is actually uh, reorienting itself, so yeah. for it to uh, separate, and we have the separation for the confirmation. Separation MTG. Brilliant. There you go. I want to applaud yes. with yes. them. <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliant. They must be so happy. Three thumbs up. <laughs> now you can see the happy faces. Everyone that we talked about earlier, they are all there. I mean, how wonderful for them. This must be so satisfying after months, years. Yeah. What teamwork. No, no, again, it's years and years of work. Oh, years and also, years. Also, I'm sorry, I have to say that it's only the beginning of the journey for the customer because uh, they have to take... Uh, it's an exciting one. They take the lead now from their mission control center and they will perform uh, maneuvers in orbit checks uh, in order to get the satellite into the final geostationary orbit. <laughs> they uh, are so happy. I'm so I'm happy for them. Look at this. No, this okay. is just marvelous. Yeah, now no, we need to, uh, to, to wait for them to make contact with their uh, spacecraft and, uh, and uh, monitor the entire health status of each one of the uh, and for the upper stage, uh, we still need to make the passivation, so release the remaining of the propellant hey, uh, hey. in order to prevent Welcome any risk. To the stream, yes, I know. Um, it's it's always a uh, sleep killer for me whenever I stream. So um, there is there is something about it, but I always love to stream these launches. So yes, it is indeed another successful launch from the Ariane space. Coming up while we wait for Stefan. Well, yeah, no, no. we will uh, need to wait for Stefan, and he has uh, to say, he, he just listen to him. He has some updates also, always, about next launches and all those things. So, wait and see. 
times we were actually uh, attending a launch for uh, two other customers. But I can tell you that when you're there, uh, you are really living the situation and we were in the same boat. <laughs> Everyone and the, the tension there is, uh, is amazing. And uh, yeah. you, I can really tell you that uh, time doesn't flow at the same pace. <laughs> so last Christmas during the launch of the James Webb yes. Space Telescope, people were wearing hats. Christmas oh, really? Hats. Christmas yes. hats. Yeah. It well, it's not Christmas Christmas-y. yet. Stefan Israel, the CEO of Arianne Space, will be with us in two seconds. I think he's being mic'd. Oh, Stefan, welcome back and congratulations to all of your teams. Yes, I think uh, tonight it's a wonderful uh, success for Ariane and all the Ariane family, uh, Ariane Group, our prime contractor, uh, CNES, which is uh, responsible for the design uh, authority, uh, Ariane Space Team for sure, and for sure a success for our customers and our satellite manufacturers partners. So it's a very nice uh, end of afternoon in, here in the Jupiter. Well, you, you all look thrilled. I'm so happy for you, and we're very happy here in the studio. So what's next here in Karoo for tonight and for the days to come before the end of the year, Stefan? Can you give us a little idea? Yeah. So, yes, in a few minutes, we're going to leave the floor to our customers and partners. We have also two uh, French ministers with us tonight, and they are going to speak at the end of this uh, uh, of this uh, broadcast uh, emission and in uh, the Guyana Space Center we will be back in one week on uh, December the 20th for uh, our last launch of the year with Vega for uh, a very important customer and very important satellites Airbus to play at Neo it will be in just one week well thank you Stefan so much enjoy and um, congratulations again to all of you and your teams thank you Stefan thank you Stay with us, everyone, because we are now going to pass the microphone over to Grégory Gavrois, Chief Brand and Communications Officer at Arin Espace. He will be interviewing three important officials from UMETSAT, UMETSAT, ISA, and Teles Alenia Space. There is Phil Evans, Director General of UMETSAT, Simonetta Kelly, Director of Earth Observations at ESA, at ISA, sorry, and Hervé Deray, CEO from Thales Alania Space. Dear Gregory, are you there? He must be getting mic'd up. Uh, yes, am I? I'm I can here. hear you. You're with us. I'm here along with our, and not only official, I would say heroes, heroes. of the day, along with their teams. I'm here with uh, Phil Evans, indeed. Uh, Phil, what does this important uh, satellite represent to you tonight? Well, uh, right at this moment, a very great many things. But, but in particular, uh, a demonstration of what European collaboration can really achieve. Uh, a demonstration of European excellence in space. For you, Metsat, a critical moment, but more importantly, a critical moment for our member weather services and the communities and industries who, who will be better protected because of it. And finally, the start of some very hard work for us over the next nine to 12 months will be commissioning the satellite ready for operational status. Thank you. Thank you very much, Phil. Simonetta, uh, this program, MTG, and not only the satellite of the night, represents a lot to ESA. Um, I, I, you told me earlier today that there are two important words to you in this program, innovation and cooperation, right? Yes, innovation, because we start the next uh, step of meteorology forecast together with UMETSAT, with very advanced instruments on board, with higher volumes of data, higher resolution, and certainly faster and better weather prediction for extreme weather events. It represents collaboration among member states of ESA, of UMETSAT, and particularly a good model of cooperation between UMETSAT and ESA the last 40 years and the next 20 years, but also good work with industry, the European ones, Stales and INA Space, that were the prime of this project, but also OHB, also Leonardo, and 70 companies that have worked with us. So great success for European cooperation overall, and also with the support of the member states of the agency which I would like to thank. And last but not least, a big thank you also to the ESA teams who worked hard on this program for the last 14 years. Congratulations to the teams indeed. Thank you, Simonetta. Hervé Deré, you, leave, uh, you, sorry, you lead the teams <laughs> in charge of designing and manufacturing these satellites of the night. Um, what does it represent to you and your teams? It's a very important, for, a very important moment for us, for all of us. 
Uh, and by the way, thank you to uh, Ariane Espace for safely delivering, delivering this uh, satellite Thanks tonight. To the teams, yeah. Beautiful <laughs> launch. Uh, congrats to uh, Stefan and to uh, all the teams that have been uh, involved. Uh, so this is a defining moment for us. Uh, MTG I1 is the first one of this uh, new third generation uh, satellite. Uh, it's, uh, it's a very complex program. As a matter of fact, it has not been a piece of cake, as we all know. Uh, in fact, we are really in, uh, talking about cutting edge technology. Um, in, it turns out that uh, our teams have been involved and very committed to this, uh, to this program with, uh, with passion and, and a very strong commitment. I'd like to thank uh, ISA and uh, UMETSAT for, this, uh, for the team spirit and for putting your trust in our teams. Uh, this is extremely important for us and I think it's this team team spirit that has, uh, let's say, uh, provoked or that, has, uh, that is at the origin of this uh, common success. So thank you very much for all of that. Now, uh, in a few minutes, we will have communication with, uh, with the satellite from our Fuchino Center. Uh, and, and then from that time, uh, our operation center in Italy, in Fuchino, will operate the satellite up to its, uh, up to its uh, let's say, final orbit. Uh, and we will start a long commissioning period with, uh, with UMETSAT, a nine, nine months commissioning period. Uh, and I think before end of 23, the objective is to have this satellite in service. We cross the fingers for the acquisition uh, the successful of uh, MTGI1. Thank you very much, Hervé. We go back to you, Emma, in Paris before coming back here in Kourou to talk about uh, the Intelsat satellites. Well, thank you to all of you and congratulations on this successful mission, Grigory. We'll be staying with us, of course, on Rotor Space to interview Jean-Luc Poiligan, right. so, Senior uh, Vice President uh, we, of Space Systems. You just witnessed such a cool launch today, guys. And it was a brilliant launch. Yes, Everyday Spaceman. Thank you so much uh, for joining in. Gregory, are you still there? Okay, we need to listen into some things now. And I'm now here with uh, Jean-Luc Frelinger. He is indeed the Senior Vice President Space System with Intelsat. So, Jean-Luc, we, we have talked a lot about uh, two satellites, Galaxy 35, Galaxy 36, uh, during our show. Could you please come back on what's their mission and precisely what did bring back to Earth? So, uh, merci, Grégory. Our Galaxy 35 and uh, Galaxy 36 satellites are part of our North American fleet refresh. Uh, they'll be used by our media customers to provide live broadcasting of news, entertainment, and sports events. Very important for us. Uh, as you know, it takes a lot of dedicated and talented people to build, test, launch and then operate a communication satellite. So I'd like to thank first Maxar, who once again provided two outstanding satellites to Intelsat. I'd like to thank our customers who entrusted the services to us. There is a reason why we exist. I'd like to thank all the team at Intelsat that worked on this project, directly or indirectly. This is really a team effort. And finally, I'd like to thank Ariane Space. Right? They delivered our 63rd and 64th Intelsat satellite launched by an Ariane Space Launch Vehicle, more than any other launch service provider that we've used in the past. So we started our cooperation in 1983, and since then we've used Ariane 1, Ariane 2, Ariane 3, Ariane 4, <laughs> Ariane 5. This is our last Ariane 5 launch, so it's time to say goodbye, farewell, thank you Ariane 5, and we will be back. So, see you soon, Ariane 6. <laughs> Surely, <laughs> be back soon. Thank you very much, Jean-Luc. Back to you again, Emma, and we'll be back with a surprise here in Peru in a few moments. Brilliant. Uh -huh. Thank you, Monsieur Froelega, and congratulations once again. Well, Gregory, as we say, will now have the privilege to pass his microphone on to none other than Sylvie wow, Botayou, okay. Minister so of Higher Education. So, I didn't know this. This was the last Ariane 5 launch. Yes, the Ariane 6 is about to debut, so it uh, certainly makes sense for this to be a last one. Uh, but, uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so it was a very good... If it, if it is, uh, I think it's uh, obviously it's a, it was a last Ariane 5 launch, so it was a very good goodbye for it. So, uh, I don't have any issues with it. Yes, Emma. Let's switch to French for this segment. I have three VIP guests, Mr. Baptiste, Chair of the CNES, Mrs. Sylvie Rotaillot, Minister of Higher Education and Research, and Philippe, 
as president of the CNES. This is a whole journey for your teams around what space can bring to the citizens today and in the future. Could you tell us? Yes, it's always an adventure for the CNES, but also for the CSG, the Guinea-Guayana Space Center, and it's always a new emotion to see the launch of Ariane 5. We are impatiently waiting for Ariane 6, and it's always moving to watch a launch, and it was a perfect launch. It's also very interesting to see what those new satellites will bring to us for the telecommunication satellites that are crucial for all the uses every day all over the planet, but it's also a very high technology satellite, which was said earlier. It's really a high technology satellite that will allow us to understand and absor observe extreme weather events, which also means being able to monitor storms, extreme rains, so we can really see the impact and the benefits that we can get for the population. So that's really a link between space, high technology, and also services to the public, to all citizens. Yes, thank you very much, Philippe. Mr. Minister, I think you've been through a lot here in Guyana, especially around innovation. This is also an innovation, right? Great emotion, and it's an honor to be here. I may be old, but I never saw a launch of Ariane. So I really want to thank you, thank the CNES, thank Ariane Space and the technicians. But most importantly, in my position as Minister of the Overseas, and we represent the government with my colleague, and I want to thank all the people who collaborate, the police, the military, the municipality of Kourou, all the people here. I am proud that this happens here. What happens in Kourou is a great image for Guyana. The government, myself, and the President of the Republic are going to try and push this. We're somehow going to use this, use you, but you deserve it. We'll have a chance to talk about this later. Mrs. Minister, I think this was a premiere for you as well. So for Ariane 5, you met the Ariane Space teams, the ESA teams, the CNES teams. So this Ariane 5 launch, what did it represent for you this day, Mrs. Minister? This day was just wow. It was really the materialization of the hard work that everyone has done. Everyone has said so, but I think we need to pay tribute to this collective work between, of course, um, industrial, uh, Ariane, Ariane Space, uh, CNES, uh, ESA, and of course, all of the companies that uh, contributed to Ariane, as well as the satellite companies for, for weather forecasts, for telecommunications. This morning, I visited the uh, launch pads of Ariane 5 and 6, and it's this um, uh, complementarity, this state-of-the-art technology, and as Minister for Higher Education and Research, well, space is still something that makes us dream. I remember that last year I had followed the launch on the 25th of December of uh, the James Webb telescope, and we've seen incredible images of space since then, and we also learned so much. And we see that the launching conditions allowed for longer um, missions, which allowed us to learn more. And for training in, in education and research, this is, of course, crucial. Thank you very much to the three of you. I'm sure we still have a lot of to learn from space. Merci et félicitations au CNES, aux équipes ESA, Ariane Group. Et this uh, launch show tonight. We are very proud of you. Début Thank you. Spin. And see you next time. Back to you in Paris, Emma. Thank you, Gregory, and congratulations to the Minister of Higher Education and Research of France and to the President of CNES and to the Minister of Overseas for having been with us tonight on Road to Space. The mission, guys, is sadly completed for tonight. All I can say is a lot of emotions tonight. It was a very wow night. Thank you, Raphael. Thank you, Mathieu, so much for being by my side. All right, so we indeed have a beautiful launch today. Uh, 
yes everyday space man what a brilliant way to retire a ryan 5 rocket i didn't know this was the last ryan 5 launch yes same here uh although i used to i always make sure that we have the perfect uh you know information which needs to be said but i didn't all i also didn't know it was the last one but yeah that's how it is i don't know what has happened to it anyways uh, uh we we ha already have witnessed the launch i guess there is some issue from the back uh, uh from the bag itself so not to worry about it uh so yes i think that should wrap it up uh and uh, we we were having a good time here let me get a second Alright. We don't need that here. So uh yes, we had a certainly a beautiful launch today. Everything went as per the plan. Uh we didn't uh, had a had any issues. Whoa, <laughs> that was something. Although there is again some issues with the yeah now it's all right okay fine okay uh so we we i don't think so we have any other updates also the artemis mission has been concluded successfully everything has been done and yes uh, uh we we have uh, this is certainly a breakthrough i think this is the yeah <laughs> if you have if you don't know guys this is a breakthrough which has happened today in which the amount of energy which they gave to attain the nuclear uh, fusion uh, means the input power which they gave was less than the output power which they got after the fusion so uh, uh, that is certainly a breakthrough input uh, is less and the output is more well 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 and that is something for sure so we'll have to wait and see how these things will be uh hope i hope uh this technology will uh, certainly come to these engines now the nuclear engines and it will help uh, it to propel uh and make sure we have an epstein drive in reality like in expanse so that the space travel is way 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 less complex and way less hassle so yes uh, you can have a re read about it. it's a breakthrough technology which has breakthrough in technology which has happened so yeah this is something which we need to see other than that uh, uh yeah uh, we don't have anything else to talk about let's have a look at yep the lift off again so uh guys thank you so much for tuning in uh, uh we had a certainly had a you can actually see the pitch over maneuver in this shot also so it was a beautiful and stunning launch uh just you know eye rolling launch i must say that for me and uh, uh we will be live uh, on the next stream which will be coming in for the swat mission from spacex so falcon 9 so there are a couple of china launches but obviously we won't be uh getting any live stream for that and abl space system i don't know what is the problem with them they always have a launch date but always always they i don't know what happens if they try um do they try or just uh, push their launch dates because we don't have a live stream we don't get any updates just a new launch date so uh yeah so on 15th of december 5 16 pm uh we'll have to wait and see if i'll be available at that point of time the timing is very bad here uh 5 16 pm i would be having an office so not so sure about it but uh we are having an electron launch and that i can stream it's on uh, 16th of december 4 30 ist fine it's not a problem uh yes so uh we we are having 
many launches before this year ends and hopefully we will be having another transporter mission uh and we should be having the uh, launcher one a launch to orbit mission let's hope everything gets uh, as per the plan uh, goes as per the plan and uh, we get to see those launches okay so uh, okay then what do we have anything else nope fine okay guys have a great great night for all of you daniel i know you uh, you are up for so long uh, and i can feel you guy uh, man i myself have been up for so long and then gone to the office it's it's a big it's a long day then obviously every uh, whole day i feel like i i'll just pass out any time now but uh, it's a both hard the work for me and i need to do both of them so yeah so good night to all of you until then this is pianchu royla you just saw rocket gyan stay safe stay healthy and bye bye